All right, welcome back. On page five, we're going to get to the last of the transformations. So we've talked about shifting up, down, left, and right. Now we're going to talk about reflections. <coughs> so if you want the graph to flip upside down, you probably saw this in the Delta math assignment you did last class, excuse me. Um, what you're going to want to do if is if I take like f of x equals x squared, this is just going to turn into f of x equals negative x squared. Or if I have absolute value, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do on here. So bear with me, absolute value of x. This is going to turn into f of x equals negative absolute value of x. So let me draw this in so you can see what I mean. So if you have that negative outside, we just learned if it's outside, vertical, same. So if it's outside, it's going to be a vertical flip. So the graph looks like that. If I have that negative outside, it's going to flip vertically, which is a reflection technically over the x-axis. So if you have a negative in front of the function, that's going to flip the graph upside down. So kind of pulling this all apart and coming back to get the graph to flip upside down you're going to have a negative outside the function and some examples f of x equals negative square root of x f of this should be an x x equals I did negative absolute value already. That's worth showing. It's a little easier to see it outside. Uh, negative x squared. So those would be all reflections vertical. All right, let's put it all together here. Without graphing, explain which transformation is occurring when compared to its parent function. If you feel comfortable and you have a pretty good sense of this, by all means, pause the video and work ahead and then come back and take a look. So this first one here, what we're going to do, I'm going to try to figure out where the transformation occurred. Okay, I have this minus 2. It's inside of the square root. So I'm just going to go back to this inside, horizontal, opposite. So it's a horizontal, meaning it's left or right, and it's a minus 2. So it's going to be the opposite of what you think. So this is going to shift to the right 2. All right, question two, I identify the transformation, minus eight. It's outside the cube. What inside would look like is if you had something like this. If you had x minus eight cubed, that would be inside. We don't have that. So this is outside. This is a vertical shift, and it's going to be the same. So it's either up or down. It's a minus eight down our negative, so it's going to go the same direction we think. That's going to shift it down 8. All right, question number 3. The graph of f of x is translated 5 units up, 3 units to the right, and reflected over the x-axis. So that's going to be a vertical reflection to form the graph g of x. Write the function. Okay, so this is what this is going to look like. g of x equals five units up. So we're just going to this outside vertical same. So the outside is going to be outside of the function. The three to the right is going to be inside horizontal opposite. So this is going to be F of three to the right to the right is a positive direction. So it's going to be the opposite of that X minus three and a reflection over the X axis. We just talked about that. That's a negative outside of the function. So there's really three transformations that occurred. One, we have the reflection. Two, we have the shift right three. And three, we have the move up five. And that creates this new function g of x. So based on that, see if you can maybe try number four and list out the transformations that you see or how many before I tackle that in a moment. All right, 
For this one, I want to start by identifying how many transformations occurred. I think that's the easiest way to go about it. So this is what I do. The negative, that's one. The two, that's another one. The minus four, that's another one. And the minus 13 is another one. So there's four transformations that happen. The first one, that negative, that's going to be, well, let me just use the text box. It'll be a lot easier. Or not. Woohoo! Really, really got this work in here. Great. Could something just work? Please. Maybe. This is so annoying. Okay. Maybe I don't need to draw a box. There. Oh my goodness. Way to learn mills. Okay. First transformation. Let me get the eraser. Get this out of here. All right. The first transformation is that negative outside here of the function. So this is going to be a reflection over the x axis. I know it's over the x. It's outside vertical same. So outside vertical. So it's going to be a vertical flip, which flips it up and down. Um, number two is going to be uh, that two. That's outside vertical same. So this is going to be a vertical stretch of two. Number three, that minus four is inside of what's being squared. So this is inside horizontal opposite. So this is going to be a shift right four. And again, that's going back to the idea that it's inside vertical, inside horizontal opposite. And that minus 13 is outside so this is going to be a shift down 13, and that's outside vertical same, where this was inside horizontal opposite. This minus 4 was on the inside. It's going to be horizontal either left or right. It's going to do the opposite of what we think, so it's going to shift to the right four units. <coughs> All right, so let's move on to page 6. So at this point, I've, I've really given you everything that you need. The goal would be for you to work through page six and page seven. Um, the, this question number eight on page seven is, is not my favorite at all. You may want to skip that one. But what I would suggest doing is pause the video now, work through as much of page six and seven as you can, and then play the video again. And you can see me going over these. All right. For question one and two, what we have here is state the function and then explain what transformations occurred. This is absolute value. That's the parent function. This was a shift right, oops, opposite left four and down six. Why? Because this plus four is on the inside. So it's inside horizontal opposite. That's why I'm going left. This minus six is outside of the absolute value. So it's outside vertical same, so it's down six. All right, question number two. There's three transformations that happen. It can be easier to just list them. There's the negative, there's the two, and then there's the minus three. So there's three transformations that you're going to need to talk about. The negative is on the outside, so this is going to be a reflection over the x-axis because it's a vertical. The two is on the outside, so this is going to be a vertical, outside and vertical, and same. If I multiply by two, I think things are going to get larger. T, this is a vertical stretch of two. And that three is on the inside, so it's going to be a horizontal move, left or right. And it's going to be the opposite, so this is going to shift right three. All right, let's carry on to the next one graph of f of x is translated seven units down and six to the left to create g of x. So g of x, six units to the left, that's going to be inside because it's a horizontal shift and it's going to be opposite. So to the left is a negative, so this would be plus six. Seven down, down is a vertical, so it's going to be outside and it's going to be same. 
So that's what that's going to look like. Down, this is, again, outside vertical, same. Six to the left, inside, horizontal, opposite is how I'm thinking of those. All right, carrying on to number four and five. All right, number four, there's a lot of transformations happening. You have the negative, you have the four, you have the plus three, and you have the plus eight. So there's four transformations that we need to mention here. The negative is outside, so that's going to be vertical. So this is a reflection over the x-axis. The 4 is outside, so that's also vertical. That's going to be a vertical stretch of 4. Because it's the same. If I multiply by 4, things are going to get larger. The 3 is inside, so it's going to be horizontal opposite. So it's going to be a shift left 3. And the 8 is outside. This is going to be a shift up 8. Those are your four transformations for that question. Okay. <coughs> All right. So going from F to G here, this, this isn't the best graph. There's F, there's D. You're starting at F and going to G. You can see there's an obvious reflection over the x-axis. The graph is flipped upside down. So you need a negative on the outside. So choice one and two are gone. You can see the negative on the outside and the others. And... You're trying to figure out, was there a stretch or not? Well, this graph here is much more narrow than the original graph, so that means there had to be a vertical stretch. So the correct answer there is going to be choice four. All right, the last page of the lesson, number six. We have an absolute value function. A is one-fifth, and we want to identify how the new function is different. Well, there's no negative, so it's not a reflection over the x, so it's still going to open up. So downward, downward, those are out. And now we're just trying to figure out, is it narrower or wider? So if I have f of x equals one-fifth times absolute value of x, this is outside vertical, same. So what this is going to be is this is going to be a vertical shrink of one-fifth. It's a vertical shrink of one-fifth. So if we're shrinking vertically, what the heck does that mean? So if I take this, I oh, can't see that. Let me go back here. If I take this graph, absolute value, let me put it on some axes, and I shrink it vertically, it's getting closer to the x-axis. This graph here, this bottom graph that I'm tracing, that's going to be wider. It's going to be a wider graph because it shrank vertically. So it pushed out more. That one's a little tricky in my opinion. Hopefully my explanation made some sense. All right, let's take a look at seven. Multiple choice question. You're just taking how does the graph compare so we have one, two, three transformations. The easiest one is probably the plus one. The plus one, it's outside vertical, same. So that's going to be up one. They all say up one, so I can't eliminate anything there. The minus two here, that's inside horizontal opposite. So that's going to be to the right two. So left two is out, left two is out. So it's either choice two or four. And then the 3 is outside, so that's going to be a vertical in the same. So if we multiply things by 3, we're going to be stretching the graph vertically. So this one's a parabola or quadratic. If I stretch it vertically, now I'm going to have this. And this here is much narrower. So this graph is going to be narrower than the original graph because it got stretched vertically. Imagine like we're just taking this, this graph and pulling it upwards. We're stretching it vertically, so it's gonna get narrower. All right, this last question. Let me see if it's worth doing. Um, I don't really care about the graph or the domain and the rain. Rain? <laughs> the range? I, really the only thing that I'd say is worth looking at is this plus two. It's outside of that three to the x. So this plus two would just be a shift up two. Um, 
if you wanted to graph this, you can graph this on your calculator, use the table. Uh, I will do the best that I can to, to graph this and tell you the domain and the range. The domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity and the range is from two to infinity. Basically, you'd have a graph that does something like this. It gets closer and closer to two, but it doesn't go past two. And if you looked at the table on the calculator, as X gets more and more negative, these numbers are gonna be really close to two. And then as you go more and more positive, these numbers are gonna get larger and larger and larger, which is what you see here. So I hope this video helped as well. Uh, at this point, what you can do is you can go onto the agenda. You can start working through the Delta math and the IXL skills for the lesson. Hope everybody's doing well. I miss you all and uh, see you soon.